Hey guys, how you doing? This is Ben Leibovich coming at you again. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This is a beautiful Saturday morning. Just fed the kids, washed the dishes. Uh, Patricia's gone to the bank to deposit all those rents. It is the sixth of the month or whatever it is, seventh of the month. And uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's how it goes around here. And I've been, I've been in the kitchen. I spent all my morning in the kitchen. And I was thinking to myself, I was thinking out loud. Now, now I'm going to think out loud. I want to talk to you about something called net present value of future cash flows, MPV. I'll put it in context to you. And this is very difficult without spreadsheets and things like that. And I don't mean it to be like a case in point uh, financial modeling right now, although this is what I do and this is what I think you should do. Um, but he here's the reality, okay? You're analyzing an SFR and you, you, let's say you're coming up with you know, $250 of cash flow for this SFR. That's what we call pro forma. You put the numbers on the page and you come up with uh, $250 and you say to yourself, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put 20% down plus $5,000 rehab, so what's my cash and cash return? So now you have this little picture, static picture. It's a, it's a it's a snapshot in time. I like to call it cash flow, CCR, COC, however you want to call it. Okay. So what you need to realize, uh, in the most intelligent terms, in the most honest terms, to really be honest with you, is that cash flow today isn't worth the same thing as cash flow tomorrow. I don't have to you to talk to you about uh, inflation, for instance. Right, I mean, inflation, uh, uh, devaluation of currency because of additional supply of currency, a lot, a lot, a lot. I've had other videos on this. You're probably hearing my children in the background. But uh, because you are losing a certain amount of value every year, every month, every year, what is the actual cash flow of tomorrow worth in today's dollars? That's what you have to figure out. Because, look, if you're losing 3% of buying power of your currency, then that means you have to make at least 3% next year in order to have the same buying power, in order to be able to afford to buy the same amount of goods and services tomorrow, next year, as you can today, right? And so the minimum, at the minimum, you have inflation and you have taxation, those two elements that are... Uh, expenses against future cash flows that you have to discount future cash flows for in order to compare apples to apples in today's dollars. So what happens with that $250 a month rental three years down the road, four years down the road? You see, most people like to analyze rentals in this way. They take this annualized cash flow, okay, and they say, okay, we're going to do, uh, you know, this $250 a month in year one. In year two, we're also going to do $250 a month. In year three, we're also going to do $250 a month. Okay, so let's say all in all it produces 12% per year cash on cash return. So then we're going to add that together, divide that by three, and we come out with annualized cash on cash. However, you could do that. However, this does not discount for this idea of the buying power of future 12% CCR decreasing relative to the buying power today. And if the idea is to increase the buying power of tomorrow, uh, I mean, keep up with the buying power today, first of all, but also increase it relative today to, in tomorrow's dollars, then that's not going to do. What you need to do is you need to project what your cash flows are going to look like. Then you need to discount them by some margin, okay, which is called the discount rate. And then you figure out what is called internal rate of return based on those real buying power numbers of today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. Does that make sense? In principle, at least. Does that make sense? It's kind of a complicated concept, but this gives you a really clear, true picture of what, how far you're getting ahead, or if you are getting ahead. The one thing I'll tell you is that the cash flow, uh, cash on cash analysis does nothing. <laughs> it does nothing uh, to paint a true picture of what is going on. So this NPV, net present value, 
uh, is calculated by taking the amount of future cash flow, projected cash flow, and discounting it by a certain margin. And the three elements you discounted for are things like inflation, taxation, and also something called opportunity cost, which is to say that if you buy this house now, but six months from now or three years from now, somebody brings you another deal that you could roll this same down payment money that you're spending today on this house into another deal that's, uh, that's going to potentially create higher uh, uh, returns, you won't have the money because it's already tied up in this house. So what is the cost of not having that money? That's the opportunity cost. So when you, when you roll that, when you, when, you, when you play with the model, when you build the model and change the numbers inside the model, a lot of things become clear about how misleading long-term holds can be. And this is why it takes an incredible amount of perspective to see where the power really is in long-term holds. And this is, by the way, where multifamily works well in some ways. Single family works well in other ways. Um, but that's a whole another conversation. Okay, so it's early in the morning. You can see daylight, but I promise you it's early in the morning. I've been up since 6, and I still can't think straight. But this is the concept of net present value of future cash flows. NPV, something that gives you a really, really good idea about uh, the true rate of return in today's dollars of t tomorrow's cash flows. My name is Ben Leibovich. I hope you have a great Saturday. Have a great day. Bye-bye.